Hey everyone, welcome to InfoGamer. In this video we're going to be starting a new tutorial series for a new game, and this game is Flappy Bird. Now Flappy Bird was a popular game a few years ago, and it was mostly popular because it was so addicting, and also it was very difficult. People would try to get past the first barrier or the first um, obstacle, and they would get like one point and then die and have a game over and so they'd be like ah oh, i can get a better score than that and they'd just keep playing it and playing it and playing it and i only ever got like maybe 10 at the most i don't know it's been a long time since i've played it but we actually made our own version of flappy bird which we're going to be going we're going to show you some of the gameplay and then we're going to create um more of a original flappy bird game but this game you can play on Android and iOS and it's called Abyss Fish. And this is to show you an example of what you guys can do with the tutorial that we give you. That we make these tutorials so that you guys can follow along but then expand on the tutorial and make it your own game. And so let's go ahead and show you some of the gameplay of Abyss Fish. So here we have Abyss Fish opened in Unity and let's go ahead and hit play so you guys can see how it works. So I really wanted this game to have a theme of underwater, deep, dark reaches of the ocean. And so we picked a character to be an angular fish, which I thought was really cool. They're the fish with the little light that attracts other fish. And when other fish get close, the angular fish eats them. And uh, when we click his light, we start playing the game. Another feature that I thought was really fun to add to this game was a randomization of the color of the fish and the light that he projects. So right now we kind of have this brown tan, which isn't that cool, but we'll, we'll do it a couple times and hopefully we'll get some cool colors. But when we start clicking, then we start swimming and it's a reverse Flappy Bird where Flappy Bird the bird sinks and you click to make him flap up. Whereas this, the fish floats up and you click to have him swim down. And I just died. Now we have a cool yellow. Let's keep going, see how high we can get. And then we'll show you how to make, not this version of Flappy Bird, cause this was our own and we wanted to have it like a 2.5D version of the game. Um, which means that all the assets are 3D, but the camera angle is perspective, but it always stays in one place. And so it, it gives the feeling of a 2D side scroller. And so the version that we're going to be making is just going to be 2D completely. So the assets are going to be 2D and the camera angle is going to be orthographic. But now we got a cool purple, but I won't, I won't keep playing because let's get started on coding. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch over to a new project. So here we have the project creator for Unity and we're going to create a new project. So we'll click new and let's give it a name. So I'm going to name it Flappy Bird and you can name it whatever you want. And then we need to find a location in which we want to save our project. So I picked a good location where I wanted to save my project and let's make sure that we select 2D because we want our camera angle to be orthographic. If you want to do your game 3D or perspective, you're welcome to select 3D. Then I'm going to turn off analytics because we can always turn that or enable that later. Um, you're welcome to create your assets in 3D as well. but we're just going to actually probably pull assets from the internet. So here we have our Unity project and let's go ahead and start creating our file system. So in assets, we're going to create a few new folders. Let's start with a sprites folder and a scripts folder. That's probably all we need at the moment. If we need any other folders for other game objects or materials, we can always create that later. Let's make sure that our camera is set to orthographic, which it is. 
and that's because we selected 2D before we created our project. And now let's go look for some assets. So I'm going to go to the internet and let's search Flappy Bird Sprite Sheet. and it comes up with a whole bunch of options. Let's go ahead and just select this first one because we want the background to be transparent and this checkered pattern uh, represents that it's a PNG that has a transparent background. So that's what we want. So let's go ahead and right click. We're gonna hit save image as and then we're gonna go find the file location of our project and save it in our sprites folder. Now I'm just using the original sprite sheet or a somewhat original sprite sheet because I'm not going to publish this game with the original sprites. I'm just going to use them as placeholders. If I wanted to republish my own 2D version of Flappy Bird, I would create all new assets for it. But for educational purposes and for time, I'm just going to use this sprite sheet. So we want to make sure that sprite 2D and UI is selected for the texture type and then we also want to change the sprite mode to multiple. Now we can make sure that we hit apply and click the sprite editor. You can split up your image into separate images by clicking and dragging and making boxes around each separate image or a quicker way to do that is by going up to the top left corner clicking slice and then automatic and then make sure to pivot center and let's go ahead and hit slice and that will go ahead and do it for us and there may be some things that you need to go back and make sure that it didn't separate a single image into multiple images if there was any white space in between an image that's supposed to be one and so i'm just going to go through real quick double check make sure it looks right all right that looks pretty good you can tell that the image is separated by these faint gray lines that are boxes that have been drawn around each image. And you can click those gray boxes and they highlight with these blue, line, blue and green lines with the blue circles in the corners and the green in the middle of the edges. The green represents if you have a UI element that needs to have a border uh, resized and the blue lines represent the image itself and so you want to make sure that the blue lines encompass the whole image that you want and the green lines make sure that they only separate a UI element and I guess one example of that this is this um, metal panel where it displays like a gold metal or a silver metal you could use the green lines to separate these corners so that the corners don't get stretched when you resize it as a UI element. But I, I'm not going to do that um, because I'm probably actually not even going to use some of these elements like the numbers and stuff. I'm just going to use text for that. But let's go ahead and hit apply. And then the last thing that we're going to do for this video is make sure our camera is in the right aspect ratio that we want. And so right now it's set to free aspect and that's good and all for testing purposes but when you build the game and you have a particular device in mind like a mobile device maybe you're building it for webgl but in this case flappy bird it's generally a mobile game and so uh, 16 by 10 16 by 9 those are all good you can also do landscape or portrait and the original flappy bird is a portrait game and you can tell that by how the background images of our sprite have been oriented they're longer in the height than they are in the width and so let's make sure that we select the same um, so this is landscape and so we could actually reverse it do a 16 by uh, 10 by 16 and that will make it portrait so that concludes everything that we need to do to set up our project for Flappy Bird. In our next video, we're going to start by creating the player controller and how the player 
will move up and down when you click or don't click. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends because it's always better to make games with friends. We'll see you next time. Bye.